My name is Evan Rees. I am an application engineer here at Sigma Tech, and today we will be discussing setting your default lead-ins. Today we will be covering setting your lead-ins as default, setting lead-ins by process, saving to lead-in tables, material lookup, importing and exporting lead-in tables, and setting special lead-ins. First, we will look at setting your defaults. Within part parameters, if you go to the lead in lead out tab, you can see on the left hand side of the screen your button for set as default. What set as default will do for you is it will save as default these checkboxes here listed on the left. That will then either pull lead ins from your lead in table or it will remember the lead ins you place here in these th four boxes and remember those for all parts. Going into Sigma Nest, I currently have internal, same as external, and center, same as edge checked. But I do not have material lookup or lead-ins by process. Thus, the lead-ins you see here are global lead-ins if I set as default. That means that regardless of my machine, my material, my thickness, or my process, these lead-ins will be the same for any part that I import if I leave these two checkboxes unmarked. Next, we will look at setting up your lead-ins within your technology tables. So if you go to your technology setup, under your machine, you can see the tab for lead-in lookup. This will bring up the table for any lead-ins you have saved with the checkbox for material lookup or lead-ins by process. The settings you can have saved within the lead-in lookup table is the machine, the material, the thickness, the process name, and the cutting parameters. So for this first line here, we would have lead-in set for this Amada machine, cutting with a laser with mild steel that is quarter inch thick using oxygen. Going back into Sigma Nest now, if I were to go back to my part parameters and my lead-in lead-out tab, if I go to material lookup and check that box, you can see that my default lead-ins are no longer present. This is because it is drawing from that lead-in table we were looking at previously. Because there is nothing set under the HK laser for this machine, material, and thickness, I don't have any lead-in set up here. So if I were to go and set up a lead-in here with a 0.25 value, and then set as default would then remember my three checkboxes. However, the next time I pull on this part, it will not remember these lead-ins I have set because first I need to save to lead-in table. If I save to lead-in table, it now remembers that I want to have a 0.25 length lead-in whenever I'm using my HK laser with this material and thickness. If I were to also select lead-ins by process, you can now see that I have this drop-down where I can select the specific process I want these lead-ins for. If I were to select laser, then these lead-ins would only be set for the HK laser with quarter-inch mild steel cutting on the laser. Now just to show, if I were to uncheck material lookup, once again my lead-ins would disappear. This is because it is no longer determined based on my machine material and thickness, but only based on the process. So if I were to change this to engraving or scrap cut, I would get a different set of lead-ins than with my laser. So if I were to set another 0.25 inch lead-in, you can see here that I cannot save to lead-in table because I'm required to have material lookup checked. However, if I set, select save as default, my three checkboxes here will be remembered and it will remember this for laser to do a quarter inch lead-in. To recap what we just covered in Sigma Nest, in order to save to our lead-in tables, we must have material lookup checked. And this will save default lead-ins to our lead-in lookup for our machine, material, and thickness. In addition, if we check lead-ins by process, which is optional, this will allow us to add process to the list of machine, material, and thickness for the basis of our default lead-ins. 
However, with lead ins by process checked alone without material lookup, this will give us global defaults by process. To summarize on how our lead ins are selected and saved as default, we have a bit of a flow chart here that may simplify it down. In order to set our part lead ins, we can have material lookup turned on or off. In the case of having material lookup turned on, we can then have lead ins by process turned on or off. With lead ins by process turned on with material lookup, this gives us lead ins for our machine, material, and thickness for our contour process. On the flip side, without lead ins by process, we have lead ins for machine, material, and thickness regardless of our contour process. If we look over at material lookup turned off, this is going to give us global defaults. With lead ins by process turned on, this gives us global defaults for the contour process. And with lead ins by process turned off, we have global defaults regardless of contour process. Now that we've discussed how we can set our lead ins as defaults, we're now going to look at how we can import and export our lead ins. So going into the technology setup under our HK laser once again and going to the lead in lookup tab, we can see our lead ins that have been saved using material lookup. Now down here at the bottom, we have buttons for import and export lead ins. First, we can export our lead ins into a CSV file, and this is going to save to your post folder. You can then open it in a software such as Excel, and that will allow you to take a backup of your lead ins that you've saved at the time, and you can always import those back into Sigmanest later. Then, if I were to clear out my lead ins and then go to import lead ins, I would be able to take that CSV file I just created and bring my lead ins back into my technology table. So since I imported, it's telling me that I have 128 standard records, but I have zero BHQ records imported. And thus, all of my lead-ins are now back. And now the last topic we're going to discuss in this webinar is setting your special lead-in defaults. Now, special lead-ins can be useful. It's a feature that we have um, that you can add, and they are customizable. And so let's just go into Sigma Nest and take a look at what they have. So once I have imported or created my part and I go to the Parts tab, I can go to the drop-down for lead-ins and click Add a Special Lead-in. This will then uh, open up this set of special lead-ins I can use. And if I double click on one. It will show it here and I can set my values. Now what you'll need to do is check available as standard lead in. This will allow me to select it under parts parameters in the lead in lead out tab. So if I click OK here and I go to my part parameters and my lead in lead out tab, I can see in my drop down for lead in I have my lead in 19A I can select from. And it's going to place it just like any other lead in. You can set the values uh, here or uh, when we originally set add lead in. Uh, that gave a little bit more information on the dimensioning. Um, but you can also set the values here if you would like. And then from here, you would just select set as default or save to lead in table depending on if you're using material lookup or not, just as we discussed earlier in this webinar. And that about does it for special lead-ins. And with that, you should be good to go to go ahead and set your default lead-ins based on your material, global lead-ins, as well as importing and exporting, and using special lead-ins.